Hello, good evening, and welcome back. In further news of diversity being our strength, home visits are banned in parts of northern England, including Manchester, where I am right now. And home visits on their own, are, that's annoying enough. Um, <laughs> whenever it comes to these things, if how are we going to police it? You're just going to knock on people's doors at random and go, so uh, do you all live here then? And secondly... So if you're not allowed to meet at other people's homes, does that then mean that you can't meet for social gatherings, uh, like we've seen in Blackburn with Darwin recently, for example, and the mosque being investigated? Is that going to be the same for the rest of Greater Manchester as well? It's not really very clear, because all this is being based on a tweet sent at about 930 on Thursday evening, saying with immediate effect or from with effect from midnight, so two and a half hours later, these changes are being put in place. And of course, with a tweet, you're limited by the characters, so there wasn't a lot of information. And the whole way this has been run out has been absolutely horrific. Bear in mind, I don't use Twitter whatsoever, and I'm sure quite a few of the same because it's utter trash. It's it's useless, and not worth using whatsoever and therefore the only reason I know of this is because I'm constantly up to date and reading news because that's what I do for you guys to bring stories to your attention as well but the fact that I'd have to do that and then nobody else I know was aware of this that beggars belief that you're going to have such a huge change on such short notice and put it out in a way that so few people are going to be aware of it. Let's say you made plans to go see somebody for the weekend, and then, okay, yeah, you're gonna fuck off Friday, it's the weekend, and go see them Friday morning. You might be driving to them on Friday, and then on the radio, you would hear the rules. Or maybe you don't listen to the radio anymore because you're sick of their ads and the too much that it has to be censored in order to appeal to the Sanders authorities, in which case maybe you listen to her podcasts instead. Use player.fm if you do, you can speed it up as well. And therefore, you're not going to know about these rules at all. And then maybe you're going to see it in a, in a newspaper or maybe a bit on TV, but chances are you and your friends don't own a television because you don't support the BBC, at which point it will take a few days for the news to get around to you because of what your friends would say. Maybe you don't want to be up to date on the news all the time, in which case you'll just purchase a magazine once a month and whatever's in there is probably worth knowing because it's important enough to still be relevant a month later and if it isn't that important then it's probably not worth knowing. However, two and a half hours notice, and sure you might say 12 hours notice for any real effect or any real impact, is still grossly inadequate at at this late stage in the game, at the end of the month and coming up to the weekend that expecting people to know these things and then having effect two and a half hours later is utterly ridiculous. And what if you've already decided, hey, I'm going to stay with a friend, I've gone there Thursday night and maybe we'll go out together Friday or maybe I'm staying with them for the weekend and it's the evening so I've, I've had a few to drink and now you're saying that as soon as the clock strikes midnight, I'm not allowed to be here anymore. But I drove here because I was sober up in the morning. But now I have to leave. And of course, I have to leave my car here and then come back to it in the morning after I've sobered up again. Just the whole idea of having such huge magnitude of changes on such limited notice is ridiculous. Which, of course, then comes down to, will it actually be enforced? Well, (laughs) that's always the point when it comes to these laws, of course. They're pushing the waters. But let it not be overlooked that even in the thumbnail here of Health Secretary Matt Hancock with his NHS badge, they're still using the rainbow imagery, which has been co-opted by the LGBTQAIIP community by all means. But... It's highly likely that anybody who wishes to wear that then has tacit admission that they're endorsing that 
a political agenda, which is, of course, cultural Marxism. So to see that worn by a conservative is very disheartening. But back to the story and topic. Separate households will not be able to meet indoors from Friday in Greater Manchester, East Lancashire and parts of West Yorkshire, the government says. The health secretary said the areas had seen an increasing rate of transmission, largely due to people not following social distancing. Or also lack of hygiene, but all cultures are beautiful. Labour criticised the government for a lack of clarity over the measures and for announcing them late at night. Well, yes, of course, given that more than 4 million people in Greater Manchester, Blackburn and Darwin, Burnley, Hinburn, Pendle, Rossendale, Bradford, Calderdale and Kirklees will be affected by the tightening of restrictions. The new measures mean different households will not be allowed to meet in homes or private gardens, but individual households will still be able to go to pubs and restaurants. And the, the whole way that the social distancing and restrictions and limitations are being put in place really baffles the mind. For example, saying, yeah, you can't go to smaller stores, but you have to go to these same supermarkets where there are queues because it's all busy and then social distancing is maintained inside and you pick stuff up and put it down and you're spreading germs around all the time. It's like, okay, but that's better than spreading people out. Okay, and then... You can't meet up in a house where it's just you and another group. But instead, if you wish to meet up with them, you have to meet up with them where there are a whole load of other people as well coming in and out. What What is the reasoning behind this? Is it actual concern for coronavirus fears, or is it instead just from an economic standpoint? Saying, nah, we'd rather you were actually uh, on the high street or... Um, supporting pubs and restaurants and hospitality businesses in instead of just the supermarkets and enjoying each other's company. Uh, we would rather you spend more to be able to see your friends uh, in, instead of just seeing your friends. Good job. However, pubs, restaurants and some other facilities will be allowed to reopen in the city for Monday as some of the strict measures are lifted uh, in Leicester, that is. The new lockdown rules for parts of Northern England come nearly four weeks after restrictions were eased across England and people were allowed to meet indoors. Mr Hancock, who tweeted the announcement at 9.16 BST, said, The spread is largely due to households meeting and not abiding to social distancing. So from midnight tonight, people from different households will not be allowed to meet each other indoors in these areas. We take this action with a heavy heart. We can see increasing rates of COVID across Europe and are determined to do whatever is necessary to keep people safe. And... I didn't think I'd agree with Labour, but Keir Starmer, he said he welcomed the move, but they criticised the way it was handled, saying measures affecting potentially millions of people late at night on Twitter is a new low for the government's communications during this crisis. And I don't welcome the move whatsoever, but it's certainly true. He added, when the government ended the daily press conferences, they said they would hold them for significant announcements, including local lockdowns. It's hard to imagine what could be more significant than this. <laughs> well... Good job, Keir. Um, I mean, I'm not a fan of political points going, but this is a very, very good point to raise. So, jolly well done, Labour. Bloody hell. So, in detail, people in Greater Manchester and so on cannot mix with other households apart from those in their support bubbles in private homes or gardens. People in those areas can only go to pubs and restaurants with other members of their household. Mmm. Mmm. Chances are... You and your friend have a favourite pub, which you would go to at a certain time anyway, so good luck with that. From Monday in Leicester, restaurants, cafes, bars and hairdressers can open, but leisure centres, gyms and pools will remain closed. Get fat, but you can't lose weight. Cinemas and museums will also be able to open in Leicester from Monday, and religious ceremonies will be able to take place. Is that because of the Eid on Friday? Hmm. The borough of Odeby and Wixton on the outskirts of Leicester was taken out of local lockdown. Gyms and leisure centres will remain closed in Blackburn, but they will be able to reopen in Luton. Good stuff. And the main thing that the BBC is now focusing on is Eid, the uh, Islamic holiday on Friday, so today. And, put simply, if you've got one law for the country, then that should apply to everybody equally. So with them now trying to say, oh, well, what are we going to do about 
this for us Muslims, though, is that, well, same law for everybody. I understand why they feel that way, though, given that they have exemptions for things like halal slaughter. I'm saying for kosher, though. Truth as it is. But as they say, BBC News correspondent Judith Mott said the government's announcement was a shock, but the data had been pointing this way for some time. She said residents will find it hard to deal with, especially those with a significant Muslim population looking to celebrate Eid on Friday. The restrictions are not as strict as those that were imposed in Leicester, but Thursday's announcement covers a much greater area. Leicester introduced a strict local lockdown, as we know. Good, good, good. First Minister of Scotland Nicola Sturgeon said the decision to ban households in Greater Manchester, East Lancashire and West Yorkshire from eating indoors was the right one. Well, of course, the Supreme Leader of Scotland thinks that. She said the UK government was right to act quickly, adding this is a sharp reminder that the threat of this virus is still very real. No, it isn't, but the threat of an authoritarian government very much is. Mkhtar Versi, spokesman for the Muslim Council of Britain, why is this a thing, said the restrictions were likely to have a large impact on Muslim families celebrating Eid on Friday. Hmm. Well, who's at the highest risk? From an ethnic perspective. And do you think it's got anything to do with a lack of hygiene and a whole lot of incest from these cultural practices? Do you think maybe that's got something to do with it, Mick Dadversi? But he went on to say, Unclear why such short notice provided, but important this message is cascaded as quickly as possible, given it goes live within a few hours. Yeah. <laughs> Again, good point. Good. Good point. But moving on. It seems to be what you'd expect at this point, that it's going to be unclear messages on short notice, but with the regular heavy fines for anybody that breaks them. And therefore you have to abide by it, because apparently this is the healthy thing to do, even though from the evidence that's now coming out, that the lockdown proved to be absolutely useless, unless the intent was just to cripple the economy. But then if you're letting people back out, and of course cases are rising, then it seems as if it was utterly useless. And if you're saying that if you've had it, you don't have immunity from the virus, then it's good to be exposed to it more often, in which case your antibodies will remain at a high enough rate in order to maintain your immunity. But trying to do it this way around, of course, means that that won't be the case anymore, and then you'll be infected again if that is actually how it happens. And no, the NHS was never beyond capacity. Funnily enough, it, it was below. It was about at one-third capacity because, of course, the people were told, oh, well, we're concerned about the coronavirus, so you shouldn't be going to hospital unless it's for that or something immediately dangerous. And we're now seeing the increase in deaths from people who weren't able to go to the hospital, or at least were told not to, and therefore didn't go, and died of very avoidable, or at least manageable, or treatable diseases or illnesses, and they needn't have died at this point if the government didn't shoot itself in the foot with totalitarian measures. But hey, I suppose that the thing about power is it's very addictive, and they just can't help themselves. So yes, the ruling for wearing masks is still in full effect. If you wish to wear one, I would say the two best bets are either wearing a bicycle helmet or a full racing suit, or making your message known by writing something on the front of your mask. Either saying that the masks aren't as helpful as you think, the masks are as useless as this government, or you could go through to Saga of Akkad's store and get one of the Ingstock logo's speeches violence if you want or the Chinese health organization which you can also write on your mask get a white mask and a sharpie and go to town why not but that seems to be the state of play of where we are right now and even Manchester Mayor saying Oh, but it's important that we follow these because then the rules can be lifted sooner. So, yeah, but that doesn't quite seem to be the case, does it? The idea of these being short-term things and reviewed very, very frequently actually all seems to be horseshit, doesn't it? And instead, things are getting worse. So, uh, I don't believe you, Mr. Manchester Mayor.
But for everybody else who doesn't have a high Muslim population, you guys should be fine with the lack of higher cases. Until, of course, they get more testing done around where you are as well and just conflate the numbers so any of the coronaviruses or rhinoviruses or anything with flu-like symptoms will be counted as a positive of coronavirus, in which case you will also experience this lockdown just to make life harder and think that you need government there to look out for you because if it wasn't for them, you'd clearly be dead, which, as we all know, is an ironic lie. But, as always, let me know what you guys think down below. Always intrigued to hear what you guys have to say about these things and we all love some good conspiracy theories. But, as always, until next time, have a good one.